There is no pain so great as the memory of joy in present grief. This is a quote from the philosopher Aeschylus, who at that moment in time had just discovered a cognitive bias, a logical fallacy that affects all humans. We, it's called declinism, by the way. We see the past as better than what it was, and anything we're going through now, or we might be going through in the near future, as far worse than what it will really be. Probably a more modern saying would be, absence makes the heart grow fonder, familiarity breeds contempt. Now, I'm going to show you a statistic from a poll that was taken last November, and when I show it to you, you're not going to believe it, but it's the absolute truth. It has to do with the current issue with the president, and it shows something, how quickly people in North America absolutely forget their priorities. It is something that had I had the ability to go back to last November and tell you the current reality would be the current reality, you would have said I needed locked up in a funny farm. It's absolutely crazy. It's battlefield of the mind, though. It's the idea that memory is a function of those who pay close attention and don't get involved emotionally because when you attach a memory to an emotion, when the emotion disappears, the details of the memory do as well. That's the trap of living your life emotionally. You will not remember the important things. Very, very um, emotionally driven negative things will stick with you for a long time. And just like was said in the ESPY Awards by Nick Saban, people will forget what you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Right now, that's the issue with Biden. When people hear him talk, it's not what he's saying or even how he's saying it. It's the sense and the feel you get from the man of unsteadiness, all the coughing and moving from one thought to the next thought to the next thought with following it by, well, anyway, it doesn't, he doesn't exude confidence. And that's his problem. And that's what he doesn't see. Now, this is usually content that I reserve for the folks over at the Patreon channel, where it's only one US dollar per month. That's it. One dollar. Trust me, it'll be the best dollar you ever spend. Now, if you want to spend less than a dollar a month and still get access to all the content, sign up for an entire year. It's pocket change. It's a matter of pennies per day. That's it. Love to have you over there. There's a $5 level as well. If you can afford that, I could sure use it. I could sure need the help right now with the sensors. They don't want you learning how to control your emotions and think critically because then you would start remembering things and they wouldn't be able to drive you to their ads. And that's really what is going on in the media right now with all of the money. Now, let me show you that statistic before I lose my train of thought. It's fully refundable, first 90 days over there, no questions asked if it's not for you. Now, real quick, Lynn Liaz, one of my favorite channels, has figured out a way to do her fireside chats again. She used to do them when she lived way out in the country, but um, financial issues had forced her to find a place that was a little bit more reasonable to afford and it was in a more suburban area, but she has figured out a way to do it. So those of you who are fans of Lynn Liaz, uh, check this out. Absolutely fantastic. Great content here in the woods, the sun, the moon, the stars, sorcery and sorcery in the church. Excellent, excellent topic. And also um, Patriot Nurse touched on a few things in her most recent video today, uh, four global threats you need to prepare for now. Um, that are absolutely critical to understanding what we're going to be facing going forward. One of the big things that we're going to talk about later in this video is how places like Africa and Russia and China and the Middle East are becoming more and more and more conservative, more and more family values oriented as the West moves away from that and Western allies are moving away from that. And that's going to have an effect on the financial state of the world. And it's going to actually reveal a little bit of a type of socialism that a lot of people have forgotten about Christian socialism, 
that existed in this country for a very, very long time. So Patriot Nurse Lynn Liaz, without any further delay, five minutes in, let's get to it. This is a poll from just last November. Just last November. Take Fox News, conservative people that watch that network were polled, USA Today. In your view, what is the most important thing for Biden to do over the next year? Now, this is before the debate. This is before the NATO conference. This is before a lot of gaffes that he's had. This is before any of that. 20% of a Fox News poll, resign, retire, or quit. There are absolutely, right now, no Trump supporters, no conservatives, anywhere on the news saying that they want Biden to quit, that they want Biden to retire, or that they want him to resign. I had Fox News on all day today to watch this, and it was nothing but one Democrat after another Democrat after another Democrat that they had on talking about how they want Biden to step aside, how they want Biden to quit, how the donor class is withholding money, how there are Every day, there are more people being added to the list of you know all the actors in Hollywood. Um, Branson, um, Ashley Judd, um, the the nighttime uh, entertainment people, all one step. Now, this was not the case a year ago. It was not the case a year ago. Well, it, what is it now? November. Um, eight, no, I'm sorry, not even a year ago. Eight months ago. Eight months ago. The vast majority of conservatives and Trump supporters were saying Biden should re- resign, Biden should retire, Biden should quit. Trump doesn't want him to. Trump has been on his side. It's, it's the most bizarre battlefield of the mind thing. And if you think I'm kidding, here is uh, 12 July 2024. Democrats plotting to oust Biden from race. Axios, huge cabal uh, driven by the Obamas and all sorts of other incredibly powerful people, Axelrod, trying to push this guy out. Major donors blackmailing U.S. Democrats over Biden, saying we're going to withhold the funds if you don't get rid of him. Only eight months ago, it was conservatives that wanted him out. You see, conservatives want him out now, but they want him to stay in for the race for the duration, meaning that they... This is the most asinine thing. And like I said, if I had said this eight months ago, you would have said I was crazy. So that those who worship Donald Trump can see him get a win, see him get his revenge, see him win an election against Biden as, ah, see, I really did win. They're willing to put the country in jeopardy for the next four months. Because there are no conservatives out there calling for the 25th Amendment to be used against Joe Biden. If, if there's one, please, please, I would love to be wrong about this. I would love to be wrong about this, but find me one conservative right now, one Trump supporter that's saying, you know what? The election doesn't matter. I don't care if they put up Kamala Harris. I don't care if they put up Pete Buttigieg. I don't care if they put up Andy Bashar. Right now, for the good of the country, the man needs removed. And for his own good, because he's clearly not in his right faculties. He's not in his right mind. Nobody is saying this using compassion for the man, given his age. All of the people right now that are so enamored and in love with Donald Trump, the man, not the ideas of Donald Trump, and they want to see this guy continue in power so that he can be embarrassed in an election. And make no mistake, there are other countries around the world that are watching this. And believe me, they're not, they don't think this is funny. This is a great article on RT. Africans want nothing to do with the West. Analyst RT. The EU's chief diplomat recently admitted that there's a high level of support for Russia on the continent. Florida Maki, what does Africa have to do with, with anything that's remotely relevant? Remember what I said about what was happening in this country? 
how the reason the borders are open is because we have a massive shortage of workers, especially in a lot of blue collar fields. And even the Patriot nurse had showed that had showed a statistic showing how many foreign born workers were getting all the jobs and how many domestic born workers were losing jobs and how that was going to change the dynamic of family starting here in this country. I mean, when you think about it from the perspective of a woman who wants to find a guy to start a family with, that's a, that's a big deal. Now, why do we care about them moving away from the West as far as values? State of global fertility. Right now, right now, there is only one place in the world that has that, and they're way above the replacement rate, meaning growing, meaning their kids, they're teaching their kids to not have Western values. Because right now, Western values is this. And there's a lot of us here in America like, wait a minute, these aren't my values. These are the perceived Western values that they don't want their kids to have anything to do with. That's why they are very much enamored with the idea of being allied with Russia. Because those things right now that a good chunk of us here in North America want nothing to do with are being espoused at the national level by the Russians. They're labeling the LGBT feminist child-free movement as extremist and getting rid of it. You see, I know a lot of you think this is Trump derangement system. It isn't. It isn't. You see, this, this would have been the logical choice. This is what the left was afraid of. This is what the left and Trump himself was afraid of. You see a candidate like this on the national stage that already had done his duty, his moral, social duty, three children above the replacement rate, happy family with children. They can't have this. They can't, the left can't have this. That's why Donald Trump joined with his leftist buddies to make sure that Ron DeSantis bowed out after Iowa. We're glad to have him in Florida. I'm not upset in the least. Not in the least am I upset. Florida is no longer a swing state, no longer a battleground state. You know what that means? That means nobody is going to be flooding our TV and our TVs and radios and everywhere else with campaign ads this election season. We're a lost cause. Florida, for the Democrats, is a lost cause. So for the first time in years, because of Governor DeSantis, we aren't going to get deluged with ads. The Biden campaign, the, the Democrat campaign, their entire machine pulled out a long time ago. There's going to be no ads. Donald Trump's not going to spend a dime. Florida's a given for the conservatives. And I've made the allegation a long time ago, not, maybe not on paper, maybe not on paper, but in reality, historians will look back and say, that was when, that was when Florida truly seceded from the union. This is just the reality right now. If you had, there was from the previous November, before all of the, the make-believe charges against Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis was actually leading in a lot of polls. But because everybody got so emotionally involved, and that's what brings us back to here, with a, oh no, they're trying to put him in jail, that's what you know got him through and got him the nomination. There's no pain so great as the memory of joy in present grief. And right now, everybody is seeing 2017, 18, 19 as the memory of joy. The memory of joy. And right now in 2024, oh, it's the present grief. It's the present grief. And it's just Declanism. It's just Declanism. Battlefield of the mind. I'm going to show you this poll again. Right now, I would love for somebody to show me a link, 
show me a picture, show me something where there's a Republican or anybody supporting Donald Trump who is coming out and vocally saying Biden, for the good of the country, needs to resign. We need somebody else, not only from the office, and he needs to quit the campaign as well. No Republican is saying that, and only in November it was the number one response. It was the number one response. Why aren't they? Because they want they want to set this guy up for it's basically T ball for Trump. They want they want to basically t- turn Joe Biden into T ball for Trump, so that Trump just walks up to the walks up to the plate there and there's the the tea and the balls on top of it and he can practice his swing he can practice swing and then and then knock it out of the park and then run the bases and win that's exactly what's going on right now and give everybody who supported trump all participation trophies that's what right now that's what beating joe biden is it's participation trophies the man is so mentally compromised, he cannot advocate for himself. He needs a vast cocktail of different medications just to be able to speak in front of people. And even then, he doesn't do it well. He forgets names and the, all of the normal things you would expect for an 82-year-old. Everything you would expect from an 82-year-old, you see. And Donald Trump wants to come in and... Basically, you know, do like the WWE, you know, and pick the guy up and body slam him and then pound his chest and say what a great job he did winning. And it's cringe. I'm sorry. It's just cringe to watch. Him, of course, but I have sympathy for this man because that's what the Bible says we are to do. I believe, and I've heard um, even the Patriot Nurse a few videos ago, it was right after the debate, she said the same thing, how there was there's a certain level of sympathy. There before the grace of God go I. We all have a date, by the way. Those of you who say, oh, no, me, no. We all have a date. Donald Trump's is coming too. We all have a date where we're going to breathe our last, where we're going to have our driver's licenses taken away and our car keys taken away and maybe be wheeled around for a while before we leave the planet. We all have that day. So as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, so have ye also done it unto me. Be very careful what you want. Be very careful the things you let come out of your mouth and say about even your enemies. The Bible says also to pray for your enemies, does it not? This is just an elderly man being abused. This is just an elderly man being abused, and as far as Donald Trump goes, the more you make the allegation that he is uh, in more command of his faculties, the less I am uh, inclined to be supportive because Donald Trump wants this man to remain in power for his own selfish reasons. It, if there was ever any proof that Donald Trump did not care about this country, it's now. Because if Donald Trump, and you can say 19 minutes, 19 minutes, Florida Maquis said, if Donald Trump cared about this country, he would be leading the charge for the 25th Amendment to be used. He would be leading the charge out in front of all of the Democrats for Joe Biden to be ousted as a sympathetic, empathetic move for the man so that he can get the care that he needs and for the good of this country, he would be leading the charge. See, that was the case in November. That was the case in November. But all of a sudden now, all of a sudden now, you know, Trump wants to give him a do. Trump wants to give him another debate. Trump wants to put this guy back out on stage again and embarrass him again. It's cruel. It's sick. 
it shows a small mind. It shows a lack of biblical understanding. It's, it's gross. It's grotesque right now. So I don't know how many Christians out there that I have listening, but I don't uh, think that a lot of these folks that um, watch these channels that talk about biblical moral values and, and take me to task over different images that I've shown, I don't think that uh, they read a whole lot of their Bible, especially where it talks, to, talks about this. So... I will leave it there probably before I say something that's going to probably get me kicked off YouTube. So once again, God bless. Love to have you over Patreon. Very, very much appreciate it. I know a dollar doesn't seem like a lot, but when a lot of people get together, just like in prayer, makes a difference. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Pray for Joe Biden. Pray for Joe Biden. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.